Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm at Apex 2014 and I'm joined by Everett Frank from Optimum Design. Everett, thanks for joining me. The name kind of implies you're in the design business, but you're actually a contract manufacturer. Just give me a brief overview of the business. Sure, our heritage business, we're 20 years in the PCB layout business, and that's our, that's our heritage, our heart and our soul. Five or six years ago, we then expanded on that base into contract manufacturing. Okay, and whereabouts are you based? We're in uh, Pleasanton, California, just okay. north of Silicon Valley. Okay, and do you know, it's interesting. I, I, I travel to the US continuously over the 10 years. There's a real sense that Silicon Valley is emerging as a powerhouse again at the moment. Are you feeling that down there in, in, um, in the Bay Area? Well, to an extent, it's coming back. So we're primarily, of course, in the manufacturing area. Right. A lot of software, for yeah. sure. Software, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah. Manufacturing, I think, less so, not in the way right. software is. Okay, okay. And I'm not sure what kind of size you are, but as a, as a single um, a single facility contract manufacturer, how difficult is, is it to compete with the, the large multinationals that are always banging this, we're the biggest kind of drum? Um, yeah, it's a great question, and it's really topical now with a lot of companies looking to reshore or regionalize their manufacturing. Mm. This issue comes up quite a bit. One thing that's really interesting about the pricing mechanism in contract manufacturing, OEMs tend to think, I'm going to go to a contract manufacturer and take advantage of their purchasing power, mm. as an example. Very common, and it's actually a myth in the industry. And it's a misunderstanding of how components are priced. Right. If components are the main element of yeah. materials, right? So the way components are actually priced in the industry, when we get a quote, we then go to our distributor, we go yeah. direct. The very first thing they ask is, who's the OEM? Right. And then the reason that's asked is because the distributor then turns to the component OEM supplier pricing. and yeah. gets the price, and that price attaches directly to that OEM. Okay. Right. So essentially, there's, there's for all practical purposes, there's a level playing field with yeah. regard to materials. Okay. Super interesting lawsuit was launched in uh, December of last year between Xilinx and Flex. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and Xilinx, uh, who knows the merits, mm. but, but Xilinx details this process, and they yeah. describe in great detail the pricing mechanism. So right. it's really, it's out there if people yeah. want to understand it. Yeah, and they just, they need to understand it. And it's interesting because a lot of the big contract manufacturers have made their money on parts, parts price variation over the years, um, rather than actually assembling product, which is what you're meant to be doing, I guess. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, so, I guess coming from design, having that, that PCB design in your, in your DNA, being involved in assembly, are you able to connect those up? Are you able to go to a, a customer and say, you know, we can actually we can actually take it all the way from design to fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I and I have to tell you, we are actually surprised um, right. in, in some res in some regards by the positive effect of that. So we, we operate at uh, sub twenty five dpmo uh, solder joint right. uh, quality on our floor, which is a phenomenal quality mm. level. And we we ourselves ask us how how do we do that? Yeah. And uh, and a lot of it is because of that. Uh, design discipline, design yeah. knowledge that comes through. We yeah. look at the boards, we run full valor simulations on every build, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So it really does have a surprising benefit. Well, you know, it does. it's a surprise to a lot of people. It's not such a surprise to me because I started my career as a printed circuit board designer back there in the go. 80s. Yeah. So um, yeah. I can see where it, all, where it all flows from that. What kind of end user markets are you, are you operating in? What, what, are your, what are your customers typically manufacturing? Our primary market is probably aerospace, okay. uh, followed by medical and others. We do uh, a fair amount of military work and right. coming out of our layout business, a fair amount of, of, of military type work, which leads a lot into the aerospace. Yeah, so high reliability where that kind of yeah. quality is really important. And are you finding that the, uh, the, the initially the design fed the EMS business and the EMS business is now feeding the design, or how does how does that work? What part of the supply chain do they enter at? Yeah, great question. We we um, actually interestingly we do a library administration business, and it probably generates the most leads for the EMS side. In the EMS side, our philosophy is to be extremely limited in who we do business with. Mm. So we choose to do business with seven or eight customers. So we do top customers like Boeing, Honeywell, Intel, places yeah. like that. And we don't seek a broad customer base. Yeah. Uh, in the layout side, we do business with hundreds of customers. Yeah. So, so they, focus on them, delight them, be the best you can. Exactly, with them. right. Great right. philosophy, right. Everett. Everett, thanks for stopping by. Great to see you, and I uh, hope we can talk again soon. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.